Hi there, lovely hand-in-hand -hand parents. Um, my name is Kathy Gordon. I'm a certified instructor of hand-in-hand -hand parenting. Um, coming to you from Los Angeles, where it's hot, hot, hot. And um, I'm here to talk to you today about love of learning, how to um, really support our kids in loving learning. Um, I'm the single adoptive mom of a 16 and a half year old son uh, who has struggled with learning all of his school years. You know, it's interesting because when he was in preschool and kindergarten and, um, he, and, and even, you know, before that, he was such a curious kid. He was a, he always asked questions. He was always exploring. He was always making plans. He was always inventing things. Um, and then school happened. And um, it, when he faced with, he, he actually couldn't learn to read. And um, so uh, faced with those learning challenges, he got the idea that he was stupid. So, and this was very um, difficult for me because school is like, I was a socially backward kid. I, I had no idea how to make friends. I was the old, I'm the oldest of seven, so I was like an adult kid. And I, um, you know, I, I, I could make conversation with kids. I had no, I mean, with adults, I had no idea how to socialize with my peers. So, you know, I always had my nose in a book and I loved learning. I love, you know, I'm the kid who, um, uh, you know, it was a three page paper and I do 10. Um, so this was really challenging for me that my son um, uh, really struggled with school and struggled with learning. So fortunately, I found hand in hand. And we're kicking off a, um, uh, a love of learning um, campaign. Um, and we're bringing you some resources. So I'm going to talk more about that in a minute. But I just wanted to talk a little bit first about some of our ideas about learning and our approach to learning. Um, and then, you know, I'll get back to my story with my son and uh, uh, how we navigated um, those learning challenges and particularly his, um, you know, the belief that he, that he was stupid. Um, so what we want to say about learning is based in brain science. And what brain science tells us, and there's actually some research studies on this, is um, that um, children learn well when they feel safe and connected. And um, so when the brain is under stress, it absolutely cannot learn. Um, and so um, the good news about that is that we have some tools to help you um, help your children to feel safe and connected so that they can learn. Now, this is a particularly challenging time. Um, many of you uh, have been forced into homeschooling. Um, some of you, maybe your school's open, but only to shut right back down again, or they're opening in a hybrid fashion where your kids are only going part-time. And so this is an extremely stressful time for us as parents. And um, we have some ideas around that as well. Um, so um, for those of you who are not familiar with our tools, um, we have four parent to child uh, listening tools, special time, uh, setting limits, uh, sp uh, stay listening and play listening. And then we have a parent to parent a, a support tool called listening partnership. And um, w one of the things that um, some parents have found extremely stressful is, you know, being this having to do this role of being both parent and teacher. Um, I homeschooled my son for five years, and that was always a big struggle of like, okay, now I'm the teacher, now you have to do, you know, but, but sort of, and there's some sort of idea that we somehow have to lose our warmth in order to be that, um, uh, that teacher. And we're here to tell you that you do not have to lose that warmth at all. Um, we're here to tell you that um, 
things are going to go better when you are feeling relaxed and playful and you're giving your kids this nonverbal, you're communicating this nonverbal message, I'm not worried. And that's particularly challenging in this time when we're worried. Like, how are we going to balance everything? How are we going to, um, uh, you know, uh, work, uh, get chores done, and be available to homeschool our kids? Um, and particularly the uncertainty of, okay, yes, we're opening up. Oh, no, now we're not. We're closing down. Um, so, and, and, and even if you are sending your kids, like being worried about their safety. So I'm going to start with our, our tool of listening partnerships, where um, it's a pretty easy mechanically in that you're going to get with another adult. You're going to, um, one person's going to listen, the other person's going to share. It's a great opportunity the per to, to like dump all those worries. Um, the person who's listening is just going to hold space for you. They're not going to give advice. They're not going to refer to anything you say. They're just going to hold that space for you. And, um, uh, uh, and they're just going to hold the thought that you're good. Everybody you're talking about is good and you're going to figure this out. So this is the place where you bring all your worries and you bring like the fact that the, you know, the, 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 the Zoom situation that your school district has set up is just not working for your child. You bring the fact that you're, you, you really can't stand this teacher, um, uh, you know, and it feels, you, you, you know, you're all of your worries that your child is falling behind. You bring all of those li to listening time so that when you are with your kids, you really can communicate this, um, this nonverbal message of, I'm not worried. Um, so, um, and then the mechanics of it are then do you switch, the timer goes off, uh, your partner asks you some silly little detailed question to help you reconnect your cortex and you switch. Um, so that's our tool of listening partnerships. And that if, is really going to help you get through this very uncertain time. It's going to, you know, all, what we've seen is that, um, and it's not just us, it's not just hand in hand, there's um, lots of organizations that, that are working with people just to listen. And we see that, uh, that, that there can be a victory of human spirit um, when it, in, the, in the worst situations when um, people are heard, when people are listened to. Um, so we highly recommend that you, um, uh, investigate getting a listening partner um, through uh, our um, large Facebook group, Hand in Hand Parent Connect, or um, our Parent Club, um, uh, it, it, which, and I can tell you more about the Parent Club in, in a bit too. So, um, okay, so, so that's the first thing we're going to suggest is that you find somebody to listen to you so that you can offload some of this stress. Then the next thing, this is a, this is a, 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 um, a real um, passion of mine is uh, encouraging parents to do this, is that we're going to encourage you to feed your funny, whatever that looks like. Um, because so, you know, so now you're responsible for this. You may be responsible for the school day, or if you're not responsible for the school day, you know, you're still responsible for getting your kids up and out the door and on school on time. And you're, you, you might have a lot of anxiety about sending them back to school. So um, one way to get cooperation is to set this tone of playfulness, create this culture of laughter in your family. And if you were not played with when you were a child, or if the, if the, um, you know, the atmosphere, the culture of your family is one of very of seriousness, this is maybe a struggle for you. So watch some videos of some old, uh, old time uh, physical comedians um, who made lots of money making fun of themselves. Dick Van Dyke, the original Three Stooges, Lucille Ball, you know, um, uh, uh, pick up Larry Cohen's book, Playful Parenting. Oh, and, and um, I said we're going to, there's a resource package for you as part of this campaign. And in that resource package is 100 Ways to Play. 
So we're going to be giving you lots of ideas as well on how you can create this culture of laughter and play. Laughter is so important because it's, um, it's connecting and it's the release of tension. Uh, you can't hold worry and laughter in your nervous system at the same time. So I, we highly recommend that you feed your funny and so you can create this culture of laughter in your family. So you get up in the morning, you come in to wake up your kids and you're, you wear your underwear on your head. Um, it's, it's walk backwards day. You're gonna, every, you have to, everything you do, you have to walk backwards. Um, they ask for the milk and you take uh, the pickles out of the refrigerator and you can't figure out how the milk turned green. So you're creating this culture of lightness and, and, and laughter in your family. And one of the things that also that that does is it makes it okay to make mistakes. Um, you know, you've got a kid who's a resistant, who's having, who's struggling with learning. And um, because you've got this culture of laughter, uh, because you've made some extra copies of the worksheet they need to do. Uh, so you, you play this game where you get to rip up one of the copies, you know, and you get laughter going. Um, that release of laughter is going to, um, it's going to release some of the tension that they may have around the, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Um, and then the last thing I want to suggest is that you, you, you gather evidence. There's a huge fear of kids falling behind. And I want to recommend that you gather evidence from unschoolers or um, there's the Sudbury schools. There's Summerhill that's been around for like 60 or 70 years in, in, um, in England, in the UK, where um, it was child-led learning. And what um, those schools discovered, all of their evidence showed that um, when kids, when, when kids are um, in an atmosphere where uh, they're not being forced to learn, but um, they're, you're following their natural curiosity, um, that they actually learn much faster. Um, so so uh, we wanna dispel this notion of falling behind and we highly recommend that you that you gather evidence of, of kids who, you know, maybe they didn't learn to read until they were 11 or 12 or 13, and then they went to Harvard, you know. So um, that's the that's the other thing I want to I want to recommend. Um, and um, so uh, I want to give you a little um, anecdote around learning with my son. So. Um, my son uh, had difficulty with his eyes tracking and his eyes converging properly. And, and even, and so it was very difficult for him to learn to read. And even after we did um, some daily, a daily developmental movement therapy program that healed that, that healed his vision, he still had a lot of anxiety around reading and around learning in general. Um, and um, we were homeschooling at the time. And so I gave him this assignment to read these, these short paragraphs and, and underline the topic sentence or main idea. Um, and he was like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And so, <laughs> um, you know, I'm thinking uh, he can't, right? So I'm, you know, my mind is reeling of like, oh, now what therapy do we need? And, you know, how much is it going to cost? And, you know, and, and so uh, for a couple of days, I did like a workaround, like, okay, well, this, this, uh, this exercise is sort of the same idea, but you don't have to read. Um, and um, and um, then I got listening time. And what I worked on is like my fears around um, my son not being able to read. I told you that my nose was always in a book. And I, um, and that I, uh, you know, that I love to read that it's always been a passion of mine, even an escape of mine. And so this idea that my son was not gonna be able to read was really sad. I, I mean, I just had a lot of grief around it. Um, uh, one of the things also we recommend that you work on a listening time is what school was like for you. Was it easy for you? Was it difficult for you? You know, um, uh, it, you can work on like, you know, what other, what you're afraid other parents are going to think about you and teachers are going to think about you. So all those are all great things to work on in listening time. So I was working on my grief around my son not being able to read. 
And um, I really cried hard about it. And then um, I had this light bulb of moment of like, I don't know what his eyes can see. I don't know what his brain is processing. I do know that he has feelings around it. And, and those feelings may be getting in the way of him being able to do this. So that afternoon, I decided I was gonna set a limit of, yes, sweetie, this is the exercise we're doing. We're doing this little, reading these paragraphs. And again, he went into, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I, I don't know if he, I think he had his shirt off or took his shirt off and he started to kind of whip it, whip me with it. You know, he was like, all that fear was being focused on me. And I grabbed a blanket and I held this blanket up. And so now it pretty quickly turned playful where he's whipping me over the blanket and trying to whip me beside and under the blanket and he's laughing. And so I took the blanket and I kind of wrapped it around his arm that had the, held the shirt and I pulled him towards me and we bumped and we collapsed on the floor. Now we're laughing. Then he grabbed a pillow and I grabbed a pillow, turned into a pillow fight. <laughs> he heaved this big sigh and then he said, can I have special time? So I said, sure, we got five minutes. So he wanted to throw the football. So we went outside, threw the football around for, for five minutes. He came in, he sat down, he did the exercise like that is if there wasn't even any issues. And I was blown away. I was like, you know, see what happened when we got the feelings out. So, and just for a recap, so I got listening time. Then I set a limit. Um, then I was stay listening to his upset. Then it turned playful, so I was play listening. And then we did special time. So that was like all five tools in that one situation. Um, so that, so that was our, that was one little experience where I really got to see how if you, if you, if you allow your child to get the feelings out of the way, then they actually can learn. Um, so I hope my little uh, talk has been helpful um, this morning. If you have, and either this evening, wherever you are, or uh, crack of dawn, if you're uh, down in the Southeast, the Southern Hemisphere, um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer questions uh, here in the comment section. Um, and, um, and I want to tell you a little bit about this campaign we're doing. So we have this wonderful package of, of resources to help your child learn. Now, you may be being bombarded with resources. You know, every parenting organization out there is we are, everyone is so eager to help you. Um, I'm a little biased in that our resources are really going to help you um, have this confidence, be able to communicate this message of I'm not worried, and you're going to be able to um, uh, help your child release any tension around learning um, and, uh, and, and so that this time forever, for, you know, these ideas that we're giving you are, are useful way beyond this pandemic and way beyond this uncertain time. So there's five videos. Um, there's a video on using play. There's um, one on um, uh, using our tools with a resistant learner. There's um, uh, two videos on coping with overwhelm. Um, one on helping your kids with this whole social distancing. That's what a lot of parents are asking us, like this social distancing thing. And our answer to that is that, you know, um, using the tools and communicating this nonverbal message of I'm not worried, your kids can thrive even though, yes, they're absolutely gonna have feelings about me not being able to see their friends. They're absolutely gonna be sad, be scared, um, uh, you know, and you can, by listening to those feelings, um, you can help them uh, through this time. Uh, so that's our message about um, this tough time of having to social distance and maybe not being able to see your friends or not being able to play with them when you actually go to school. So we've got a video on that. And then um, uh, Patty does a wonderful um, uh, talk on um, separation, which that might seem counterintuitive. Like, why are we talking about separation when many of us are having to have our kids home 24-7? Well, it's interesting. 
there's this there's this interesting piece about fear is that um in order to work on fear in order for our kids to work on fear we actually have to be uh, there and present for them and so you may have found during this time when you've been with your kids so much is that there are many more feelings this may be where they're working or bedtime gets more difficult um, or there may be some regressions in um, in potty training um, or going to the bathroom um, you suddenly your kid becomes a picky eater and we call these emotional projects so so the ideas that Patty is working that gives you in this video are about working on any kind of emotional project because all emotional projects are driven by fear. Um, we see that most prevalently in any kind of separation. Um, uh, and for those of you who are sending your kids back to school, you know, it could have been that they've been fine going to school, but because of the shutdown in the spring, and the fact that they've been home with you all this time, now um, the, going to school separation seems hard. So that's it's a really valuable uh, video that um, uh, Patty uh, is offering, that we're offering in this package. Um, then we've got a booklet on how, how children's emotions work. Um, as I told you, um, a, um, uh, a, a downloadable PDF on 100 ways to play. Um, and then we've got some great resources just around scheduling. Um, uh, you know, it, everybody's going to find their own way with scheduling. One of the things that we want to tell you is that um, the most important thing about your scheduling is that you're putting in connection. Um, because that is going to help your kid be able to sit in front of Zoom. That is going to um, or if you're, you know, help them do the worksheets that are being provided for them, that you're printing out for them. Um, so really building in that connection throughout the day. Um, and, you know, kind of um, what this time is really requiring of us is being the CEO um, and I, of our families. And I say that the CEO stands for Chief Emotional Officer of our families. So that's what it's really requiring of us, of being really mindful about our kids' emotional health. Because again, going back to what I said in the beginning, if, unless kids feel safe and connected, uh, you know, we, they, they're not going to be able to learn. Um, so, uh, and they're going to be sending you really loud signals that they're not feeling connected. Um, they're going to dig in their heels. They're going to refuse. They're going to, you know, throw tantrums. They're, they're, um, uh, there's going to be meltdowns. So those are signals that your child is not feeling connected and that they can't think. So whatever your schedule looks like, we, we really encourage that you think of, um, uh, just like the CEO of a business thinks about their their employees and their productivity and like, oh, do we need more meetings? Do we need more communication? Do we need more safety protocol? Do we need more, you know, supplies? You know, that you as the CEO of your family um, uh, really look at their, look at the connection and the flow of the day and building in connection and creating that culture of laughter and setting the tone the first thing in the morning, creating connection first thing in the morning. Um, and that you, as a leader, do what all good leaders do, which is to get yourself some emotional support. So, um, so we're asking for, so that's our whole uh, package of resources for you for this Love of Learning campaign. We're asking for a donation of $6 or more. Um, your uh, donation will help us support uh, parents uh, like you. Um, and um, be able to offer more of these kinds of resources, to be able to offer more of uh, scholarships to our, um, our starter class, um, which uh, I teach and um, would love, would be honored to have any one of you in, in uh, my class. And um, a starter class is our foundational class where you focus on one tool each day. So if you like structure for learning, it's a great structure. Um, and um, uh, you know, be able to provide the 
the, the, the support for parents in our Parent Connect Facebook group. Um, and, uh, um, and, um, and also, um, uh, uh, we have a scholarship rate right now for our parent club. Um, and because I'm the co-moderator of the parent club, uh, I'm going to just, uh, toot our horn for a little bit and just tell you that if you join the parent club, we're giving you coaching on demand. We, you, it, we love uh, lots of questions. We want you to post your questions there. We have a private Facebook group just for our uh, parent club. Um, every single question gets answered by myself or Emily Gray Murray. We're both the instructors who are the co-moderators. Um, it gets answered within a couple hours. Uh, um, you get um, a weekly instructional email. You get um, uh, a weekly support call. Patty comes in once a month and does um, a, a, a Q and A webinar, um, and it's just an extraordinary uh, support community. You know, in this time of of social distancing or physical distancing, you know, we can we can feel very isolated, and so um, we've created the the you know the parent club can give you the kind of support to get to weather to weather this storm. So. Um, so that's um, uh, our, uh, um, our uh, love of learning campaign and a little bit about some of our other resources. Um, we are so honored to support you. We hope that um, you will reach out and uh, ask us for su support because we have uh, resources for you. Um, we really hope that you will take advantage of this wonderful uh, love of learning uh, package of resources. Um, and um, we are here for you. We are here for you when uh, times are hard and we know times are hard right now. So um, please reach out. Um, we'd love to support you. And thanks so much for tuning in today. Uh, we'll see you um, on our Facebook group, in our Parent Connect Facebook group, or in the Parent Club. All right, have a great day. Sweet dreams. Bye-bye.